All right, welcome to Yoga for Less Flexible Bodies. I invite you to begin this practice sitting with your hips on a pillow or a bolster, a cushion that lifts your hips up off the floor a bit. And by doing that, by getting us a little higher, it takes some tension out of the hip flexors and allows you to sit with your legs a little more relaxed and grounded on the earth. It's not a requirement that you cross your legs. Maybe soles of the feet together feels better. I think you can start by finding what seems like a comfortable seat. We'll take a few deep breaths together as we begin. So let's inhale the arms up overhead, elbows soft, and as the hands meet, exhale right through the front of the body. Just do that easy circle a few times with your breath. For this practice, we will be using this pillow or bolster, a couple of blocks and a band. So just gather anything you have around you. We'll be really enjoying the use of props today to bring the poses to our body instead of forcing our body into poses. So allow your hands now to rest on your legs and put a little bit of weight, put a little pressure onto your legs, like you're trying to ground yourself down into the earth. Just a little pressure. If there was a yoga teacher here, maybe they would be helping you to ground. Shoulders come up by the ears, back behind us and then down. Let's do that a couple more times. Just easy shoulder circles. And then just settling here for a moment, you can close your eyes or just soften your gaze down. Continue to take these slow breaths through your nose. As we move through this practice, we'll be using these props very much like the adjustments you make when you get into a car. So let's say you're getting in a rental car. You've never been in it before. And the person in that car before you was really tall. So you might lift the seat. You might lean the seat back. You might scoot forward. And all of those little adjustments make that car fit you so that you can drive safely and feel comfortable in the driver's seat. That's what we want to offer you today with this practice is we want these poses to be comfortable to your body and put you in the driver's seat. Let's let the left hand fall to the floor on the left side and bring your right fingertips to your right shoulder. And then just take a gentle side bend here. This first opening into the right side of the rib cage. You have arrived at this practice with the absolute best teacher you can possibly have. Come back to center, switch sides. And that teacher is you. You are your own best and most wise teacher. As we go through this practice, I'll just invite you to listen to your body. Welcome to a new healing relationship with your body. Come back to center, switch one more time, and this time we'll take the arm up overhead. And so to help you be better at listening to your body, we're listening for whispers, not screams. So you might just try this here. If you reach way over, you might start to notice more intensity, maybe even sharp points. We wanna stay away from that. We wanna find a softer edge where the body is just saying, yeah, that's good right there. That's good. Go ahead and switch fingertips to shoulders, and then extend up. So it might be hard to find the soft edge. 
without first finding a harder edge. So safely go ahead and find that more intense edge and come back from that just maybe 5%. It's like your body goes from ooh to ah. Always looking for ah over ooh. <laughs> and we'll come back to the center and let's one, once again roll the shoulders. Take another deep breath in, arms overhead. And as you exhale, hands to your heart, pause for just a moment and see if your body has any message for you. If there's any part of your body that feels sore, tired, or tender, just let your body remind you to proceed with caution around that part of the body. And then let's find our way around to a tabletop position. So the first thing we want to do is um, consider padding under the knees. If you're on a hard surface and you want to fold a blanket or fold your mat a couple of times, just give your knees comfort. There's no reason to be uncomfortable here. And we'll move through cat and cow. So you can flatten your feet or tuck your toes either way great options, and then start to lift the tailbone and snake your way up the spine. The head moves last. Exhale, tuck the tailbone and drop the chin. And we're just here to explore what's happening with our spine. There's nothing to perform. There's no way to do these poses right. There's no way to do them wrong unless they hurt. So we're just here with curiosity, listening, moving. And then let's find a neutral position flattening out our feet. We'll move into child's pose. So take your knees as wide as your mat and bring one of your blocks in front of you. If you feel like your knees or your hips would appreciate a pillow or a cushion underneath them, go ahead and bring a pillow on top of your heels and allow your hips to be a little higher. See how that feels. And then we'll lower down to our elbows. Take a moment to see if this is the place you'd like to rest in for a few moments in child's pose. Or see if your forehead would like a little pillow. And you can also explore stretching the arms a little further, bringing some sensation into your shoulders. Allow these props to support you in this pose. Letting our muscles know that when we're supported and we're safely moving into the poses, the muscles can relax, they're holding. When we force or rush, our muscles contract and hold even more tightly. You might notice if you're allowed to be in this shape for a while that it's your body allows a little more depth a little more dropping in. We're always avoiding sharp pain. Let's release from this shape, set the props off to one side. And then with our hands under our shoulders, knees coming in again, let's tuck the toes and shift the hips back into what I affectionately call screaming toes. So flexibility is actually more about our fascia than it is about our muscles. And fascia wraps all of our muscles through our whole body. 
there's a back line of fascia that starts on the bottoms of our feet. So if we're gonna be stretching calves and hamstrings, we wanna start with the bottoms of the feet. So maybe shifting right and left. A little uncomfortable on the feet, but um, not painful. Draw the belly in and then let's slowly rise up into a bent knee, downward facing dog. Keeping the knees really bent at first so that we can press into the front of our palms and lift the sitting bones up and back. And then we'll begin a gentle bicycling of the heels. There's never been a rule that downward facing dogs have to have straight legs. I watch my puppy do this pose all the time and she never has straight legs. So wiggle around, find that soft edge. And then let's come up onto our toes. Keep that bend in the knees. And as you exhale, reach the heels a little closer to the mat, settle in. And then we'll slowly bring our hands back to meet our feet. Here, let's take a little wider stance for our forward fold. And please put a bigger bend in your knees so your torso just rests right on top of the legs. You can keep your hands on the floor or you can come into rag doll. Maybe that block is a nice place to rest your hands. So give yourself a moment here, draping over your legs. And once again, knees are bent. Try, try not to lock the knees out on this one. Let this be an unfolding, a release for your body. A big exhale. And then with fingertips on a block or the floor, inhale to a flat back. Let's come into a half, halfway lift. And you can bring that block as high as you like so that it feels like your back's nice and flat. I'm actually gonna come up to the high side of my block. So place your prop underneath your right hand and put a big bend in the right knee. So right hand, right knee. And then just open up a little bit toward the left side. Just an easy little twist right here. Spine is long. Breath is deep. We're here to listen. We're here to feel. To be wise students of this body. Come back to center, find your halfway lift and then shift the block underneath your left hand, bend the left knee and take an easy twist to the right. Let your breath move through your whole body. Here to learn from the wisdom of this body. shifting back to center let's bring both of our hands to our shins and then our thighs dropping down into chair and then press up to stand mountain pose you can move your props we'll be standing here for a bit so shifting our weight right and left let's get our weight right over our feet and we'll build a little bit of heat in our bodies. So let's take the arms out and up overhead, extended mountain, as the palms meet, sinking back into chair. And we'll do that a few times. Motion is lotion, so we're just warming up from the inside out, allowing the muscles to release their holding. 
Start to hear the sound of your breath, that ujjayi breath. At each sound. One more deep breath in, arms reaching overhead. And on the exhale, hands to heart center. Put a bend in your knees and shift your hips back. Place your hands on your thighs. Heel toe your feet a little bit wider and let's do some standing cat and cow. Tailbone moving first, head moving last. And then finding a place that feels like neutral, let's bring a block in front of us on its high side. As you exhale, hinge forward from the hips, let your hands settle on the edge of the block. Knees are bent, head comes down. Press on to your prop, lift halfway. And as we lower down, let's bring the block to its middle side Plant your hands and step back again, downward facing dog. Knees are still soft. We're gonna shift our bodies forward and drop the knees to the mat. This block is underneath your chest or maybe rib cage. And as you exhale, spin the elbows forward, lower until you feel a body, your body touching the block. Let's press back up and shift back again into child's pose. And then lifting into downward facing dog. And taking a slow walk forward, just really slow and deliberate. The knees stay bent, toes behind that block, lift halfway. Beautiful, everyone, really nice. Exhale, forward fold. Bending the knees, let's sweep the arms up overhead. Maybe now the tiniest back bend. Little bit of extension in the spine and hands to heart. So we just completed one sun salutation. We used a block as a prop. Let's try that again, movement with breath, finding ease of moving in your body. So soft knees rise up, extended mountain. Hinging from the hips, lead with your chin and your chest forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, downward facing dog. Shifting forward, let's drop our knees, spin the elbows and lower until you feel that block. Pressing up again, shift back, child's pose, tucking the toes, downward facing dog. And then slowly walk forward, feet to the block, fingertips on top, lift halfway, and exhale, forward fold. Bending the knees, let's rise up, extended mountain, and bring the hands to the heart. Really nice, everyone. One more time, Sun A, and then we're gonna slow things down and start moving into the, the deeper posture stretches. Rise high, bow low. All the joints are soft. Forward fold. Inhale to a half lift and exhale, downward facing dog. Uh, we'll take that vinyasa using arm block, shifting forward, knees or toes, lower. Yoga push up and down dog. Feet toward the block, lifting halfway and lowering down. Let's put a bend in the knees and rise up high. Extended mountain, finding that little back bend. 
Really nice, everybody, hands to heart. All right, good. Let's find our hips. So moving forward from the hips, the knees are soft, the action comes from the hips. Let's come to our flat back. And then keeping the right foot where it is, we'll step our left foot back, dropping the back knee. And the block comes over to the left side. If you do have two blocks, it might feel good to keep put your hands on two blocks here. Maybe two pillows, two sturdy water bottles. If you got two dogs and they'll hold still for you, whatever you got there. So we're starting to get into this big muscle in the front of the back thigh called the hip flexor. It's tight on all of us, but especially if you've been doing a lot of sitting, running, or riding. So we're going to give it some time. If you are feeling great, just stay here. This is such a beneficial stretch. The worst thing that can happen is you get bored. If your body's giving you a green light, you might try coming up onto the higher edge of your blocks, a little more upright posture. A lot of people notice that one in their lower back, so just pay attention. Maybe even hands to thighs, bringing us into a little bit of a back bend. Where do you most notice the shape in your body? If you have come to an upright position, lower back down, lower the block to its lower side underneath your left hand. And then let's press on the right thigh, opening into twist. Once again, this is a wonderful place to stay, just lengthening and rotating the spine. You're welcome to explore lifting the back knee. You're welcome to explore opening that arm up or wrapping the arm behind you. Maintaining a twist for the spine. The arms and legs are accessories to the deep twist happening in your torso. When you feel ready to come out of the twist, settle the knee once again. Let's bring both blocks underneath our hands and we'll slide back into a hamstring stretch. And let's do a little rocking first, forward and back. We're just asking permission of these muscles. Always asking permission. And then settling back into a hamstring stretch finding first a soft edge. So you might have that knee slightly bent. If you're getting the green light, maybe the toes come back, maybe the blocks slide forward a bit. What well, feels like a place to stay and observe. Trusting that if we stop forcing our muscles they respond by letting go. And let's shift our bodies forward once again, planting the foot, tuck the back toes, and then shift your body forward so that you can step the left foot to meet the right foot, lengthen into your flat back and fold in half, knees bent. Notice your right hip and notice your left hip. They should feel like two different worlds right now. Maybe it's more subtle than that. 
Put a deep bend in your knees, hands to the thighs, lift your spine. Inhale, arms into chair pose, Utkatasana. Let's get a little bit of heat on the way to the second side. Deep breath in. Beautiful, hands to heart, forward fold, exhale. Left foot stays put, right foot steps back, and we'll drop that right knee. You're welcome to pat up under that knee. Finding comfort here. All right, take your time, close your eyes, let these muscles find their release. You might notice the thoughts happening in your brain right now. Thoughts create a chemical reaction in the brain that gets translated to the body. So if your thoughts are, oh my gosh, I'm so tight, that's what the body hears. See if it feels good to come up a little higher. Let your lower back be the boss of how upright you go. So what could we replace I'm tight with? I am flexible. My body is relaxing. My muscles are releasing. This feels good. There is ease in my body. Take one of those and try it on. And coming back down into our twist. So the right hand lowers to the block, left hand on the left knee and then just Pressing open through the shoulders. Find the first soft edge. Hover there. And then you get to explore. Maybe try on tucking the back toes. That's a yes or a no. You can choose. Try on extending an arm or wrapping behind. Each day, maybe a different choice. What does your body want to explore today? Maybe the two sides are different. We'll slowly unwind from the twist, both blocks down on the ground. And let's start to shift back and forth, releasing the hip flexor and then releasing the hamstring. These two massive muscle groups work against each other, but also together to allow us all of our movement. Let's find a place to hold, find a soft edge, soft knee, soft ankle, and then explore more or less. You are the most wise teacher for yourself Guide your body into a place of release. I always find that just small micro movements help me relax more than when I lock and force. So 
You might notice that I kind of breathe in and out of these edges, really tiny micro movements. You could try that on and see how that feels in your body. And then let's shift forward to the lunge, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, and step the back foot to meet the front foot. Meeting in a forward fold, noticing left and right. And then softening those knees, let's lift to flat back and then reach up high, extended mountain. With your arms overhead, notice your hip flexors. Is there any more length in the front of your body? Any more space or release? Let's drop the left hand to the left leg and reach the right arm up to the sky. Moving now in lateral sideways motion. Imagine there's a handle on your ceiling and you're trying to pull yourself up with that handle while your spine curves to the left. So the arm is an anchor up while the body moves to the left side. Where does your breath go? Return to center, both arms up and switch right arm down, left arm high, the hand an anchor. Breathe deep here. And reach your arms high. Let's bring the hands back to the heart and down to our sides, to Dasana. So before we go to our next deep, deeper stretch, I'd like to in, reintroduce movement. So in people that live in tighter bodies, this vinyasa flow, these movements really help to maintain the heat in the body. So we're just gonna lift and lower a few times, inhale arms up and swan dive forward fold, moving slowly, listening to the body. Let's do that again, rise high. And bow low. Reach high. And bow low. With hands on the block, same idea, lift halfway. Strong back. And then soften the back muscles as you pull the next exhale. Let's do that again. Inhale to a half lift and exhale lower. Two more times, lift and lengthen. And lower. Hear your breath. Feel the way your body's responding to these gentle requests. In forward fold, put a deeper bend in the knees and then straighten the legs. As much as you comfortably can, just see how your body responds to this new request. And then moving props out of the way, keeping the knees soft. Let's explore this transition of stepping back into downward facing dog. And then shifting forward into plank. Let's do that a couple of times, back and forth. Notice movement, movement with breath. From downward facing dog, lift the right leg up high, feeling the glute contract while the hip flexor stretches. Returning that foot to the ground, switch. Feel the left hip, left glute contracts, left hip flexor stretches. And lower. Right leg comes up high. 
shifting forward. Let's draw that knee as close as we can to the chest. Let the toes settle wherever they settle. And then shift your weight so you can help that foot all the way up to the top of your mat. Use your hand, you can use several steps. Let's drop our back heel and stand up into a warrior stance. So before we add the arms, let's get the feet. Really pressing down, anchoring down into the earth, feeling strength, stability, the legs, the knees, the hips, stable, strong. Hug into the midline. And then from there, grow, arms up. Shoulders relax. Feeling your breath, your stability, your strength. Is there anywhere in your body now that you can soften a little? And anywhere in your body that you can find a little more strength, where can your strength and flexibility meet? Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, hinging from the hips, let's fly the arms behind. So again, introducing movement with breath. Sometimes we lock into these poses so long that we, again, just fight ourselves. Take a deep breath in, arms high. And as we come forward, let's let the fingertips fall to the floor and walk our hands toward the long edge of our mat. Toes turn slightly out, bend left and right. Introducing movement with breath. Just asking permission. Coming over to our um, one side, whichever knee is bent, bring the hand inside the foot on top of a block and let the elbow press out into the leg, let the leg press into the elbow. So introduce here this new relationship of strength. Leg squeezing arm, arm squeezing leg. Let those two body parts just meet. And with that strength there, see if there's a little more room for the hips to lower into more sensation. Strength and flexibility coming together here. Release. Shift to the opposite side, bring your block with you, hand on block, and then let your leg and your arm come into communion together. Elbow to knee, knee to elbow, squeeze those limbs together while maybe creating a little more space for your hips to drop into. Strength and flexibility together. And slightly release while you turn all the way to the back edge of your mat, um, or whatever edge the left leg is at, will be in a left leg warrior one. When you're ready, come up, find the feet, feeling the legs. Let's create stability here first. Strength, the warrior standing their ground. And from that strong base, float the arms. Feel the difference between strong feet and relaxed hands. Stable hips and relaxed shoulders. Let breath move through your body, celebrating this balance of strength and flexibility. On your inhale, lift tall. On your exhale, hinge from the hips, fly the arms.
So maybe the new definition of flexibility is release. Maybe flexibility is our softness, our ease, our letting go. And we can only do that if we have stability and strength. One more time, lift high, bow low. Let your hands come to the mat. Bring your block with you back into the wide straddle. Heel to the feet wide. Our toes will stay facing the long edge of the mat as we inhale flat back and then exhale fold. Allow this block to be either a hand rest, an elbow rest, or a head rest. Your body will help you decide which seems most helpful. But let this block support you in some way. And once you find that position with support, breathe deeply. Notice where your body feels the sensation the most. Just receive this shape, the medicine of this shape to your body. Take one more deep breath in and out. Rising up to a flat back. Let's bring ourselves around once again to the front of our yoga mat. We'll drop one knee and swing the other knee around to meet it. One round of cat and cow. Coming back into our wide knees for child's pose, but let's bring the blocks here to the front of our mat. And then again, if it help you, helped you to have some padding under your hips for child's pose before, you're welcome to grab a pillow to support you. That's kind of a nice tool for knees. Then hands on the ground, forearms on the ground. Take a breath here. This is a great place to stay. Your back is stretching, your hips are stretching. There's a relaxation response. If you'd like to explore some stretching into the chest and shoulders, you could play with placing your hands on the blocks and see how that feels. Noticing when any sharp edges show up, I'm coming back away from those just a bit. Let your breath help you determine if this is the right place for you. If you can breathe deeply, you're in the right place. If your breath catches shallow or choppy, see about taking a tiny step back to where breath flows more freely. Let yourself sigh and exhale. When your next breath out, start to peel yourself back to forearms if you were down somewhere else and set the blocks off the side. We will transition around to a seat. So once again, if you'd like to be on a cushion or a folded blanket, you can try that. We'll be using our strap here as we make our transition down. So let's take the strap around the bottoms of our feet. 
And wiggling around a little bit on our seat, our cushion, let's find Dandasana. Dandasana staff pose is an L-shaped pose. It's actually quite challenging. It's a wonderful stretch for the bottoms of the feet, the Achilles tendon area, the calves, the backs of the knees and the hamstrings. You might notice that it requires some back strength, some core strength to be here. So use the strap to kind of pull you forward a little bit to, to assist with that. And just enjoy this hamstring stretch. When we start to fold over our legs, the, the stretch travels up into our backs and it's actually less of a hamstring stretch. And most of us live with rounded backs all the time. So this is very therapeutic and helpful with our posture. So breathe here in Dandasana. Notice where is their strength and stability? Where is the softness? Where is the ease? You combine the two. Strong flexibility or flexible strength. We're gonna release the band. The statement I get from most people that don't do yoga is I can't touch my toes. And I believe that's because so many people are trying to touch their toes with straight legs and a rounded back. So I offer this, everybody bend your knees and grab your toes. See, you can touch your toes. <laughs> so if we all have a hold of our toes and our backs are straight, then we can start to explore how far out we can press our heels in this forward fold. And once again, this is all hamstring. We haven't moved into the back in flexibility yet. So this is an awesome way to stretch your hamstrings. You might even go a little farther and just see if you can still maintain a hold on your feet. And then forevermore, just bend your knees that much. Reach forward. And as a final invitation, if your body wants to fold forward round over your legs, you might slide your blocks under your knees now to support the bend that you have there. And just let yourself fold over your legs. Noticing that now the stretch has traveled up the middle and lower back. Let breath move through your body. Find ease here. Releasing the feet, let's walk the hands up the shins the knees to the thighs, find that straight back again. If you've been using blocks, take those out. Let's slide down onto our backs, keeping the strap nearby, and then draw the legs in. Holding the knees tight together, make some circles. So just tiny circles around the sacrum, the low back, the tailbone, massaging any tightness or tension you might find there. And reverse that. Let's hold on to the right knee and settle the left foot down to the floor. We'll create a figure four here. And this can be a nice little passive stretch with the feet on the ground. Flex the foot and see how it feels when you push that knee away from you a little bit. 
So this is a, a nice deep stretch in the hip rotators. You can stay right there, or if it feels good to you, pull the legs in and, and gently press again. We're here to be curious and explore, not to force or push. That micro movement might be interesting. We're here to listen and learn from this body to honor its requests. And then we'll set that figure four down, keep the leg crossed, open the arms out into a T and then just let those legs fall over to the left. You can adjust your hips to the right if you like, but just keep that figure four so the ankle is still against the thigh and turn your head to the right. You are the wise teacher now. If you need to make any adjustments to this, you can uncross the legs. You can put a block between your knees. You have all of these tools at your disposal. There's no way to do this wrong unless it hurts. Take the deepest breaths you have taken since we started this practice. Returning your head to the center. Let's unwind from that figure four, uncross. Let your toes feel the outside edges of the mat. Do a couple of windshield wipers. And let's switch sides. So planting the right foot, crossing the left. A passive stretch, just a little pressure on the left leg and you can see if that's where you wanna stay. The muscles of the hip, just gently stretching. And if you'd like a little more, you can pull in. Breathe deeply here as if your hips had lungs. A little micro movement to explore. And then we'll plant the foot on the floor Shift your hips to the left just a touch and then drop your legs to the right, keeping that figure four and turn your head to the left. See if there's any tension in your face, your jaw or your neck. Release some of that holding. Exaggerate the deep breaths. Take another deep breath in, come back to center. And uncross your feet. Okay, last shape before Shavasana. We're gonna use our strap again, and we'll come into a, a held or a supported version of legs up the wall. So just put a band around the bottom of both of your feet, soften your knees, and allow there to just be gentle relaxation as you hold this band. Close your eyes and enjoy an inversion, being upside down. If you're comfortable here, you can slide your hands down so that you're barely tugging on the band, just enough to support your legs.
allow this reverse of circulation, the energy of effort. Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, bend your knees. Switch your hands from the strap to your legs. And give yourself one more hug, side to side movement. And then let's start to find our way into relaxation. You have all these props right now, so you're welcome to bring something under your knees. That takes some tension out of your low back. It might be nice to have a little pillow under your head, something over your eyes. Allow yourself to be so comfortable here that the body is not a distraction. Choose a word to use as a mantra here, a word that you can repeat each time you inhale, a word that creates for you feelings that you'd like to have in this moment. Could be calm or peaceful or relaxed or even just love. Choose a word that serves you in this moment. We will end this practice with a little visualization meditation. You are welcome to continue lying on your back. If you prefer to be seated, find your way slowly to a seat, finding any support. Take the next few breaths to select where and how you want to be for this visualization. Wherever you have chosen to be, turn your palms down so they can be on the ground or on your legs. And as you breathe deeply, I invite you to bring to mind an image of your former self. The first image that comes to mind, maybe you were a child or a teenager or Maybe it was just yesterday. Hold in your mind an image 
of your former self. In this image of your former self, you were like a caterpillar, just going through life, eating leaves, living life as a caterpillar. Now bring to mind an image of yourself right here, right now. And in this moment, there is something challenging happening in your life. It could be the challenge we are all facing with a pandemic, restrictions, uncertainty. And it could be something more personal to you. Let your hands slowly come into soft fists, a symbol of being inside a hard place, a cocoon. Now bring to mind an image of your future self on the other side of this hard place. And let your hands slowly open like a butterfly emerging from its restrictions. Breathe deeply with this image in your mind. Take a deep breath in and on your exhale, let the hands come together in front of your heart. You can place them over the heart flat or together like prayer, whichever serves you best. another moment to acknowledge this place where you find yourself now. May this practice help us more fully embrace the tight spaces we find ourselves in and invite us to find softness inside of those hard places. Thank you all for joining me for this practice. Namaste.